Leonard Euler was one of the most eminent mathematicians of the 18th century and is held to be one of the greatest in history. He released hundreds of articles and publications during his lifetime and continued to publish after losing his sight. His work covered almost all aspects of mathematics, from geometry to calculus, trigonometry and algebra, to number theory, as well as astronomy, cartography, mechanics, optics, and theory of music. The mathematical notation used today was created or popularized by Euler, including Euler's number E, the imaginary number I, f of x, the summation sign sigma, and the use of a, b, and c as constants, and x, y, and z as unknowns. If you are dealing with mathematics at any level, you are likely using something Euler gave to the world of mathematics. So who was this man? Let's take a look at his background. Leonard was born on April 15, 1707, in Basel, Switzerland. His mother was Marguerite Brucker, and his father was Paul Euler. His mother was a pastor's daughter, and his father was a pastor in a Calvinist church. It seemed clear that Leonard was destined for a career as a rural clergyman. His father had studied some mathematics at the university in Basel while taking his theology degree and became friends with the Bernoulli family, who also lived in Basel and were famed for their mathematical prowess. His father's friendship with Johann Bernoulli will become important later in Leonard's life. Leonard grew up in Ryan, about five miles from Basel, close to the borders of France and Germany. The school in Ryan was not exceptional, so his father gave him extra mathematic lessons at home. Leonard showed aptitude and propensity for mathematics that he eventually obtained his own mathematic books to work through. This was uncommon during the 1700s. In 1720, when he was 13 years old, Leonard entered the University of Basel. His father insisted that he study other subjects such as theology, Greek, and Hebrew. Leonard received his master's degree in philosophy in 1723. His thesis analyzed the philosophical works of Isaac Newton and René Descartes, the inventors of calculus. Since his father was friends with Johann Bernoulli, the two discussed young Leonard's mathematical talents, and what came to be were private tutoring lessons from Johann himself. His father had hoped Leonard would follow in his footsteps and become a pastor, but private lessons with Johann revealed Leonard had astonishing mathematical talents. What came to be was that Leonard was allowed to spend three more years studying mathematics under Johann's guidance. He followed a mathematical path rather than a spiritual calling. In 1727, at the age of 21, Euler moved to the Russian capital city, St. Petersburg, after an unsuccessful bid for a professorship at the University of Basel. His friend Daniel Bernoulli, the son of Johann, was a mathematician at the Imperial Russian Academy of Sciences. Euler mastered the Russian language in quick fashion and began working as a physiology researcher. By 1730, he was working in the more appropriate field of physics, becoming a professor of physics. Daniel returned to Switzerland in 1733 leaving the senior chair of mathematics open for Leonard to acquire, which he did, and soon after also became head of geography. Euler believed geography was responsible for his eyesight issues, as he strained his eyes mapping Russia. Around 1738, his eyesight began to deteriorate, and by 1740, he lost his sight in his right eye. Euler wrote to Christian Goldbach in 1740 to say, Geography is fatal to me. His work in Russia also included a book on Newtonian dynamics, Mechanica, which was published in 1737. After 14 years in St. Petersburg, the growing political landscape had become unsafe. The sheer number of people being executed caused Euler to think, Anyone who said anything 
could be hanged for it. So in 1741, Euler moved his family to Berlin, where he accepted a position at the Berlin Academy. Euler would stay in Berlin for the next 25 years, where he would write numerous articles, including two of his most renowned works, Introductio in Analysin Infantorum, published in 1748, and Institutions Calculi Differentialis, published in 1755, which is the same year he became the member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Science. A compilation of his letters that he wrote, tutoring the German princess of Annald de Saul, consists of more than 200 best-selling letters, named Letters of Euler on Different Subjects in Natural Philosophy Addressed to a German Princess, or sometimes referred to as Letters to a Princess of Germany. Euler worked in all branches of mathematics, including infinitesimal calculus, geometry, algebra, and trigonometry. He was the first to present the concept of a function like notation of a trigonometric function, along with introducing many notational conventions that I previously mentioned in the introduction. And he contributed to the engineering field immensely through his Euler-Bernoulli equation. In the end, he would lose sight in his remaining eye with a failed cataract operation in 1771. However, his blindness never got in the way of his career. He had an excellent memory and exceptional mental ability that made up for his lost eyesight. He wrote one paper a week for every week in the year of 1775. Euler spent his last days of his life in Russia. He died of a brain hemorrhage on September 18, 1783. His mathematical prowess made advances by later mathematicians possible. So we will look at some of the connections he has had. First, it is accepted by the mathematics community that Euler was the most prolific mathematician of all time. Euler's collected works and correspondence are still in the process of being edited and stand at over 31,000 pages. His overall contributions made possible further advances by later mathematicians, including Joseph Louis Lagrange and Pierre Simon Laplace, who were also splendid mathematicians of the late 18th century. It was said by Laplace that all mathematicians were students of Euler. One doesn't have to look too far to find Euler's name in some math book. Anyone can find Euler's name in any branch of mathematics. There are formulas of Euler, polynomials of Euler, Euler constants, Euler integrals, Euler lines, Euler circles, Euler diagram, Euler force, Euler method, Eulerian coordinates, Eulerian correlation, Eulerian path, Euler's expansion, Euler's theorem, and so on. Every mathematician today is influenced by the work of Euler. In Leonard's early years, he was lucky enough to be mentored by Johann Bernoulli and become friends with Daniel and Nicholas Bernoulli, who would later assist in getting his first job at the Academy in St. Petersburg, Russia. It's clear that he respected Newton and Leibniz, the inventors of calculus, as he spent much of his life refining the ideas of those that came before him. But Leonard didn't impress everyone during his time. Benjamin Robbins, the inventor of the ballistic pendulum, which is studied in Newtonian physics, thought Euler's use of differential equations to be an admission of failure and to represent an uncritical obedience to calculation. Other detractors that didn't fully appreciate the brilliant mind of Euler was Frederick, the King of Prussia, to whom Euler accepted a position from in Berlin. Frederick would mock Leonard for his cyclops appearance, only having one eye, and he valued Leonard for not being able to generate light-hearted, clever conversation and correspondence, which the king valued more than just plain mathematics. The famous French writer Voltaire, 
who did not understand mathematics, but was a staunch Newton supporter, and even created a satire disparaging Leibniz in 1759, continued his poison pen work, writing satires in 1752 that attacked the top faculty at the Academy of Berlin. This included Leonard Euler by name. The king loved cruel spoofs created by Voltaire and is said to have laughed until he cried. But for all the harsh political forces that surrounded Euler during his time in Berlin, for which he wanted no part of, his legacy outlived the embarrassment created by a few. His work remains and stamped in the annals of mathematics, affecting all those that have come after him. There are too many Euler contributions to mathematics to try and list and go through, and it would likely be foolhardy for me to attempt to. However, I will show several highlights of Euler's contributions to mathematics, as he studied and inspired fundamental concepts in calculus, complex numbers, number theory, graph theory, geometry, and many which bear his name. Some of these I have already mentioned, but they're worth repeating. Euler was the first writer to define a function and write it as f of x. He was the first to use summation notation using the Greek letter sigma. He introduced the standard notation for trigonometric functions. Euler introduced the analytic approach to trigonometry and was responsible for the modern treatment of the function log of x and e to the x. He created a consistent theory of logarithms and imaginary numbers. He introduced the symbols we use for e and pi and i, which is equal to the square root of negative 1, and linked them in a relationship of e to the pi i is equal to negative 1. Euler wasn't the first to identify E as an interesting mathematical constant, but he did make several important contributions to its study, such as Euler's constant. In his book, Introductio in Analysin Infantorum, he showed the infinite sum and the value of the limit and the number A with the property of were all the same number, the number E. Euler's constant. The discovery that initially gave Euler a reputation was announced in 1735 and concerned the calculation of the infinite sums. It was called the Basel problem, named after the Bernoullis, who had tried and failed to solve it. The problem asked, what was the precise sum of the reciprocals of the squares of all the natural numbers to infinity? Daniel Bernoulli had estimated the sum to be about one and three-fifths, but Euler's superior method yielded the exact result of pi squared over six. He also showed that the infinite series was equivalent to an infinite product of prime numbers, an identity which would later inspire Riemann's investigation of complex zeta functions. Also in 1735, Leonard had solved a problem known as the Seven Bridges of Konigsberg, which had perplexed scholars for many years. This solution laid the foundation of graph theory and presaged the important mathematical idea of topology. The list goes on and on with all the contributions that Euler contributed to mathematics, and we could probably spend several hours discussing his many findings. For more information on Euler's contributions, researchgate.net suggests to seek out Buschkerichti's article on Euler in the Dictionary of Scientific Biography. And remember, as Laplace stated, all mathematicians are students of Euler. My name is Bradley Moore, and this was a presentation on Leonard Euler for the History of Mathematics. Mayville State University. Thanks for watching.